Shorthanded on the second night of a back-to-back, Jason Tatum's NBA 6th most 10 30-plus point scoring performance fueled Boston to their 4th consecutive win overall and 3rd straight since this channel's last Celtic video. Meanwhile, adding to his never-ending list of 2023-24 baptizations, Jalen Brown's snap crackle and popped up for another 3 posters, 2 of which occurred in the span of under a minute. Crypto P's 21 off the pine was a game's 2nd most, as Fast PP's monster night consisted of six deep-range bombs and joining fellow Boston PP Paul Pierce in league history. It was another all-star caliber performance for MIP favorite Derek White, but Sam Hauser's taken the label of Boston's most underrated player. The Celtic coaching staff got funky by inserting last-minute off-season free agent signing Lamar Stevens into the starting lineup as a small ball five, while Porzingis and Horford being out also meant it was a Namiyash Keita and O'Shea Brissett night for Heisenberg Joe Mazzula. I am the danger. You're about to see a breakdown of all that, so keep it here. Right quick though, just 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so splash that sub box if you haven't already. Also, do both yourself and your boy a massive solid by following at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter, so you're always one of the first to be updated on my channel's content. That's at Hoops on both platforms. Thank you to the best audience there is. Back to the content. Tatum's evasive shot creation improved Boston to an insane 13-0 at home. The Superstars 30-piece also handed Orlando their third worst loss of the year, and it was a revenge win for Beantown given the Magic had won the previous four matchups between these two squads, which included handing Boston an in-season tournament L during group play. This pick and roll with Namiyash Keita, you see Tatum initially attack to his offhand, then impulsively spin right through the lane around both Isaac and the legal two-hand straight-up contest of Wagner. But more notably, later on, that full-on whirling Dervish 360 would act as bait for this 180 spin, aka Smitty dribble, to leave his matchup in the dust. For JT on the night as a whole, aside from making just two of his nine triples, his flow in general was on point. Likewise for Jalen Brown, who shot 0 for 5 from deep range, the rest of his bag was clicking on all cylinders. In the physical prime of his career, Jalen's put together a lengthy compilation of electric throwdowns in year 8 as a pro. How Brown's been able to rise up and obliterate the rim time after time has been a sight to behold as Jalen's evidently one of the best athletes on the surface of this planet. The rarely achievable punctuations gracing your screen may act as two points on the scoreboard, but are simultaneously intimidating personality changers. These jams can oftentimes get in the head of opponents, and in all cases give Boston a jolt of energy on the succeeding defensive possession. Also providing Boston with momentum throughout the course of a grueling 48-minute bout, Peyton Pritchard's liveliness, stay ready so he doesn't have to get ready poise, not to mention savvy crypto trading deep range bombs, made PP the ultimate contributor off the Boston bench. In 24 games throughout his fourth career year as a pro, the Oregon alumni is making an above average 39.4% of his catch and shoot jumpers. More notably as of this recording, over five games throughout the month of December, Double P's attempting an average of over four threes per game and knocking down a fairly shocking 42.3% of them. Given the traded away for Holiday, Malcolm Brogdon was a big piece to last year's run to the conference finals with his leadership and albeit inconsistent but viable playmaking chops, that's left a fair amount of weight on Crypto P's shoulders to replace that production. Despite his lack of height, standing at just 6'1", the sound mechanics in Pritchard's jump shooting release combined with his willingness to be a team player within the offense make him one of the game's most intriguing role players when it's his night. Staying consistent will be the key, but when you factor in all of first off his basketball IQ, secondly his handle on a string, and thirdly his speed in terms of both decision making and physical movement, Peyton's potentially a player who'll be there to step up and win you a game or two when it matters most in the postseason. Boating well in terms of that, it was the 15th time in franchise history that a Celtic made six threes while hitting better than 80% of them, next to 08 Finals MVP, 10-time All-Star, and NBA 75th Anniversary team member Paul Pierce. Pritchard is one of two Celtics ever to have reached that deep range efficiency in a game multiple times. Moving on to the undrafted product of Marquette and Virginia and Sam Hauser, who quietly continues to be a vital weapon to this New England attack. 
While he's number 10 in the association in three-point percentage, just trailing all-star Jalen Brunson, Hauser's entire skill set can get glossed over. Comprised of balanced, swift-shuffling lateral quickness to guard one-on-ones, and reactive wherewithal to be a vocal leader who can scope out passing lanes, Hauser's defense was elite against Orlando. However, after grabbing one of his game most four steals, you see his overlooked offensive bag as Uncle Sam pulls off consecutive high-velocity momentum crossovers to shed subs. Shifting to the bald mamba Derek White, and it's insane to think this man wasn't even ranked a top 100 player by ESPN on the mainstream platform's preseason rankings. A stat sheet stuffer supreme, D. White replicated the bench production of Uncle Sam, tying Hauser for a game most four steals, while also scoring a game third most 19 points on 7 for 15 shooting. What a damn luxury it is for the Jays and this Celtic organization and fan base as a whole to have this counted on nightly boost of production from 2022's all time great trade deadline acquisition in D. White. With how things are shaping up, I'm predicting the Buffalo Derek White will be a legendary name in Celtics history when it's all said and done. Meanwhile, for the center on a two-way contract out of Utah State by way of Portugal and Namias Keita, it was a more than solid 18-minute showing for the man. The first half saw the man stay down on two Ingles pump fakes, then deny Jinglin Joe at the basket. The second half, a three-possession sequence saw him throw down a two-handed lob, lock up consecutive pick and rolls before swatting a layup attempt off the glass, then out of a delay cross action, secure the Pritchard floater entry and finish left-handed in traffic. Given they were missing both Chris Dapps Porzingis and Al Horford, this also meant Lamar Stevens was tasked with Grace in the starting five for the first time as a Celtic in what was only his eighth appearance of the year in general on the season. Lamar was waived by the Spurs in July, but after having to wait nearly three months on the free agent market and being signed by Boston in late September, I think it's great to see Stevens saving his career. Classic next man up showing with the injured unicorn and godfather additionally led to former Raptor and Pacer O'Shea Brissett getting 16 minutes of action and going a perfect 4 for 4 from the field. Two of those made field goals were throwdowns, one of which was left-handed. Guy has some talent, as my fellow Torontonian combined with Hauser and Pritchard for a crucial extra 43 off the bench, as this man's proven to be a nice reserve addition by GM wizard Brad Stevens. I said it was Hauser, but as of right now, who's the most underrated Celtic in your opinion? Best answer gets a shout out next video and gets up on the speaks board for a chance to win free NBA merch. Today's shout out goes to Elijah Woods, who says Giannis had the right to get the game ball on such a historic night, but he went too far sprinting into the Pacers locker room, and the Pacers didn't have to be that petty by continuing to instigate Giannis and the other Bucks. Perfect take right there. Deflo signing off.